Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today on Tuesday at 10 a.m., Jason Lamb and I will be essentially repeating a talk that we gave at RSA, but a little bit updated version, of course, by now, dealing with distributed web applications and some of the security threats to them. The talk will be sort of a little bit defend and attack format where I'll be the defender and Jason will be the attacker. A link will be included in the show notes. After its attack against a colonial pipeline, the dark side ransomware gang, of course, made news big time, also talked about disbanding itself, but at the same time, impersonators of dark side are now springing up, according to some reports, emailing to companies ransom notes, of course, without backing them up with the actual ransomware. Remember, dark side did encrypt the data, And at the same time, also threaten the release of the data. Of course, the release of the data is for some companies as critical as not having the data accessible anymore. So these impersonators, they're skipping straight to threatening the release of leaked data without actually encrypting any data. And that's probably here the giveaway that uh, you are dealing with an imposter. If you still have access to all of your data, nothing is encrypted and you're getting an email claiming that the dark side ransomware gang did breach your network. Don't lose too much sleep about it. Uh, Maybe take a quick check, making sure that uh, all looks good, but you hopefully uh, do that anyway as part of your normal operations. And if you are actually the victim of a ransomware attack, always uh, double check uh, with some people that are dealing with these ransomware gangs more routinely. Uh, Law enforcement would be one resource here, for example, to make sure that you're actually dealing with the group that they are claiming to be. Uh, This is important uh, because, of course, the group's behavior, their likelihood of actually relinquishing a key in return for a payment, That all depends on the actual uh, group that you're dealing with. And yes, there's a lot of controversy whether or not you should pay, but uh, if you made a decision to pay, you probably want to make sure that you're paying the right people. And that's, of course, in particular, a problem that may show up if it becomes news that your organization was affected by ransomware, similar to what you had sort of with uh, real world kidnappings, where unrelated groups are claiming credit and are trying uh, to get some of the ransom. And Bitdefender is reporting that the latest version of the Tesla Remote Access Toolkit or RAT is, uh, well, uh, yet again, uh, hitching a ride from COVID-19 news. We have had, of course, a lot of malware that uh, did use uh, COVID-19 related news as a ruse in order to get people uh, to open attachments or click on links. The latest example here with Tesla is that they claim that something went wrong with your vaccination uh, registration and they offer a good old RTF uh, document with some fairly old exploits going back to 2017 and earlier. So nothing really all that terribly dangerous if you're reasonably well patched. But at the same time, watch out for uh, these attachments and uh, probably best to never let them reach the user. And the Tor browser fixed an issue that I think I uh, mentioned here about two weeks or so ago called a scheme flooding. The trick here is that an attacker could attempt to get your browser to open URLs that start with various schemes like Skype colon or Zoom colon and the like and enumerate software that you're running on your system and with that fingerprint uh, your uh, browser and breaking the anonymity of Tor. So update your Tor browser if you're using it. This, of course, also affects other browsers and probably the best workaround here is to uninstall any software that you don't actually need reducing the fingerprint. 
And then in other updates, we got the six vulnerabilities in Schneider's power logic devices and also an update for Autodesk's AutoCAD and particular AutoCAD, of course, we have occasionally been seen to distribute malware. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And if you have any feedback, uh, please uh, let me know if there is something we should change, any news that I missed that I should have covered. Just uh, use the Internet Storm Center's contact page.